We have seen in previous videos how to verify if a sample mean or an individual value is significantly different from a population mean. There are many times, though, where we might want to check if two sample means are significantly different or, in other words, if they come from the same population or not. This is where the z-test for two sample means come into play. Here's a scenario to help clarify what the z-test for two sample means really is. Now, even though Bishop's University is in the province of Quebec, it harbors students that come from the Quebec system of education, as well as students from the rest of Canada and the United States. Suppose you were to take a sample of Bishop students from Quebec and a sample of Bishop students from outside of Quebec. You would like to determine if there is a significant difference in age between these two samples. So you're not interested in the mean age of a Bishop student. You're interested in comparing these two samples. Now, if you get to the statistical conclusion that the means of your sample are significantly different, then we can say that there are two distinct age groups at Bishop's University, the age group of Quebec students and the age group of students from outside of Quebec. On the other hand, if you get to the statistical conclusion that the means of your sample are not significantly different, then we can say that there is only one age group at Bishop's University, and as such, there is only one age population for Bishop's University students. Do you remember the sampling distribution of means? There, you took many samples from one population, calculated all of the sample means, and then did a distribution of those means. The distribution of means took on the shape of a normal distribution. The same kind of idea applies here. When you take pairs of samples from two populations, you can take the difference between the two sample means. Repeat this a sufficient number of times, and you can plot the sample means differences. If both populations have the same mean, most of your differences will be equal or very close to zero. Due to the chance, though, it's possible that you'll get some greater differences. So all in all, your distribution of differences will resemble a normal distribution. Now let's go through a complete example of testing the differences between two sample means. Just like all other tests we have seen, we start by choosing which test we will do. With the chi-square test, both the independent and the dependent variables were qualitative. Here, our independent variable must be qualitative and our dependent variable must be quantitative. In the example we are using, age is our dependent variable and is quantitative, and student provenance is our independent variable, has only two values and is qualitative. A second condition is that both samples must be random. This is something that we will take for granted unless otherwise specified. A third condition is that you must know both populations' standard deviation. The final condition is that both sample ends must be higher than 30. Step 2 is of course determining your statistical hypotheses. These will vary according to what is the question you are trying to answer. If the question refers to a two-tailed test where you are looking for a significant difference with no specific sense of direction, your null hypothesis states that the means of both populations are equal like so. The alternative hypothesis states the contrary, that the means of both populations are not equal. If your test is a right-tailed test, your null hypothesis still states that both means are equal. Your alternative hypothesis, on the other hand, states that the mean of the first population is higher than the mean of the second population. If your test is a left-tailed test, your null hypothesis again states that both means are equal. The alternative hypothesis states that the mean of the first population is lower than the mean of the second population. To keep on with the example given in the beginning of the video, we will ask ourselves if the age of students from outside of Quebec is significantly lower than the age of students from Quebec.
As such, our statistical hypotheses will be these. The third step is identifying the level of significance. Again, unless otherwise stated, we will use alpha is equal to 0 0.05. Step 4 is determining the critical value. Because this is a z-test, we revert back to our z-table. We are doing a left-tailed test with a level of significance of 0.05, so we are looking for the z-value that delimits an area of 0.05. You may want to look it up in your table, but it's quite possible that by now you already know that this value is minus 1.645. Step 5 is calculating the test statistic. It is still a z-value, but there is yet another variation on z-scores. Here is the equation for comparing sample means. So we first have the mean of our first sample minus the mean of our second sample. From that result, we will subtract the result of the mean of the first population minus the mean of the second population. Then that total result, we will divide it by the square root of the sum of the standard error of the first sample plus the standard error of the second sample. Now we can actually simplify this equation. Remember that we are rejecting or not the null hypothesis. This hypothesis tells us that both population means are equal. When we subtract two equal values, the result is zero. So the equation simplifies itself to this. Back to our example, let's assume that the values we need are these. By plugging in the numbers correctly in the equation like so, we obtain a calculated z value of minus 4.14. Step 6 requires us to take the statistical decision. Our calculated value stands here at minus 4.14 and is quite inferior to our critical z. As such, we reject the null hypothesis. Step 7, resume the situation. So because we rejected the null hypothesis, we can say that the mean age of Bishop's students from outside of Quebec is significantly lower than the mean age of Bishop's students from Quebec. So there are two age populations for Bishop's students. Now it's your turn. Pause the video and test the claim that students from private schools obtain significantly higher scores at provincial exams than students from public schools. Your calculated Z is quite high, so you can state that students from private schools obtain significantly higher scores at provincial exams. So you have two distinct populations of students based on provincial exam results.